actually don't know how I ended up here, I must be honest. I've been chained to my sewing machine for the last three months and I happened to attend a WooCommerce meetup and um, I just self, just confessing, I am completely a WooCommerce addict. Sold out Bangal, absolutely love it. I would be lost without WooCommerce. Um, I um, went to the meetup and I just learned some amazing things, chatted to Gareth and Matty and they were like, hey, we're looking for speakers. And I'm kind of a sucker for this kind of torture, standing in front of a group of people and having to give a presentation. I have no idea why. So I'm really, really um, so honored to be here today. I'm so honored to just be standing here in front of a crowd of incredible people. Each and every single one of you this morning, it's amazing. You're here at WordCamp. You're here to learn. You're here to grow. You're here to take your lives to the next level. And activating your dreams and your ideas and uh, just a big big thank you to the organizers the sponsors the volunteers i mean where can you attend an event in cape town 450 rand for two days and get this kind of amazing awesomeness so we are so so lucky yeah so lucky to be here so i am claire claire never this is my husband over here Kirian, and he's actually taking a day off work today to uh, be my support and um, he is just the most amazing support to me. I honestly couldn't do what I do without him behind me, backing me all the way, um, you know, driving the car like a rodeo when we've got to rush to a courier deadline because I had a last minute order. Um, so just thanks so much, Kirian, for all you do for me. And uh, yeah, so I am actually here to, thank uh, <laughs> you, yes, run with this. <laughs> I am here to infect you with this disease that I am, I am so completely infected with. It's loving your customers, even when they drive you crazy, all right? I completely adore my clients. They are the reason for what I do. Um, here's a, a slideshow. It's to distract you from my face while I give this, this, this presentation. But basically, I make photos and suspenders and ties um, sometimes I feel like a superhero in the wedding industry because I often get called on at last minute moments. I had a mom, um, mother-in-law to the bride. She phoned me one afternoon. We have lost the page boys, suspenders and bow tie. And she's almost in tears. Claire, please, can you send me another pair by tomorrow afternoon in Joburg? So I said to her, yeah, we can do We'll do that, we'll do that. So I think we're on our way. We had an appointment or I had customers coming. So, you know, I just whipped out the, the fabric and the materials and pulled up my order sheets in WooCommerce. So I knew that what she'd ordered and what the kid's age was and size, and we did it. We managed to get that bow tie and suspenders kit and the mom and law didn't get found out. So we saved the day for her because imagine having the bride cry and just hate on the mom and law because she'd lost the Page Boys outfit. So sometimes I feel like a superhero. Other days I feel like I never leave the house. I'm literally chained to my sewing machine, but I really am grateful that I get paid to hoard fabric. It's actually so incredible. I feel so spoiled. So basically what I'm gonna do today is share a couple of stories with you. Um, my customers have actually written the content of my presentation today. I am so lucky. And um, as I said, I'm in the wedding industry and the way I feel about the wedding industry, I've been in it for about six years. It's like being in the special forces training for customer service. You are never going to meet a more demanding, emotional customer than someone in the wedding industry because you are literally defining a moment in their wedding day, which is supposed to be the most magical day of their lives this glorious experience. And you know what? It's a privilege actually to be in that space. And there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of responsibility. I take that responsibility very, very seriously. There should almost be like a, as the Socratic oath in medicine, you know, first do no harm. I feel like there should be an oath in the wedding industry, like enter at risk, at your own risk or something like that. So I, I really do love it. And, um, we're going to be giving away some bow ties this morning. Woohoo! Yes! There are only six, okay? So, 
I am looking for six people. They're going to be brave enough to put their hands up at the end of my presentation and ask a question. <laughs> all right. And uh, yeah, don't, don't try to trick questions with me, people. All right. I got up early this morning to be here, so be gentle. All right. Let's jump right in. Okay. So first thing that I have learned about business is that it's not always about investing money. A lot of people think you've got to invest a lot of money. And yes, it takes money to make money. But one of my core success things is basically I have invested a lot of time in my business. I have spent a lot of time learning, trying, failing a lot, a lot of failing, but then a lot of learning and trying again. So I don't know how to do it, but we actually have a turnover. Last month's turnover was just over 40K. And um, that's literally me behind a sewing machine and Khadi on there taking care of the rest of life for us, all the dishes and the cooking and the, the courier driving. And um, I don't advertise. So I feel a little bit like a unicorn in this room right now because everyone says, how do you get business if you don't advertise? So I can't really talk about how we do that. I don't exactly know how we get it that right. But one thing I know is that we... I've invested a lot of time into my SEO strategy. I've researched it as much as possible. There's so much free stuff available online. So one thing I can say is, you know what? If you don't have a lot of money, don't worry. Just get the things right that you can get right. You know, WooCommerce, there's so much stuff free. WordPress, learning, reading, it's free. It's amazing. So invest heavily in your time. Okay, running a business is a lot like farming. Okay, it's kind of a weird thing, but it really is. It's a lot like farming. You reap what you sow, and there is no overnight success story in farming. Be prepared for the long haul. Excellent customer service is the least expensive investment you can make every day that will bring the greatest return. Okay, as I said before, I really, really love my customers. Even the mothers, it's always the mother-in-laws. Apologies to any mother-in-laws in the room, but... I once had a woman who literally, she phoned me or she WhatsApp me every five or 10 minutes asking these questions about these bow ties. And it started to drive me a little crazy, but I just kept bringing the friendliness and answering the questions. And I actually got the most beautiful testimonial from her. Her name is uh, Amanda. And um, I'm gonna have my website details up later. So go onto my website, go onto the journal and read Amanda's story. Um, so I'm gonna dive right in, okay. Stories and values. Your customers are your greatest teachers and keys to your success. I get my best ideas for designs and new products from customer quests. True story. Actually, my biggest selling product, I did not design. An amazing customer who literally one day walked through my door designed it and it has made me a lot of money. You should have taken out shares or something or get a commission. So I'm going to tell you the story of Heinrich. Um, basically, the lesson that Heinrich has taught me or that I've learned from interacting with him is that going the extra mile, even when it costs you, can have amazing, amazing returns. So this is Heinrich's testimonial. I drive all my reviews and testimonials to Google Maps. Um, so here, Claire is one of the most helpful and pleasant people we have dealt with during the wedding planning process. She's so efficient and it seems like she will do anything to add something special to a customer's wedding day. We wanted to buy some extra fabric for little heart brooches to match the tie and bow ties we got from her. And she immediately gave the details of the store where she got the material from. Inside story, I did not want to actually give them extra fabric. That's why I said it's the fabric store, because this fabric is actually, it's like a really short run and it's sometimes hard to find amazing, amazing fabric. So I thought, ah, let me send them to the fabric store, see if they come right. I know they are ordering more. Anyway, so then this happened, right? Um, when we let her know that they were out of stock, she offered that we can just come fetch some of her extra material at no charge. This level of customer care is not something you experience every day and has really added to the fun part of wedding planning. Thank you so much, Claire. So clients can become your greatest supporters when you take care of the little things for them. Sometimes it means that you're gonna have a little bit less of your favorite fabric in your stash. But that person, <laughs> Millie, this is my cat, our cat, our fridge out. Right. Um, so you totally distracted me now. <laughs> 
So when you take care of the little things, okay, sometimes it costs you a little bit, but I have won a fan for life. In fact, I've won a friend. Heinrich and Adrian, and they'll hang out with us. They come for dinner, and um, it's amazing. I've met some of my best, best friends through, through my business, and it's a good thing because I don't really get out to meet people. So the next scenario, right? This is about Warren. So I get a phone call on a Sunday afternoon. How many of you people get clients that phone you at the worst times? It's almost like they don't really realize that other people have lives and families, huh? Late night phone calls, Sunday afternoon when you're trying to nap. Yeah, they kind of know when to phone you, right? So Warren was in a desperate situation. He was so panicked when I answered the phone. He was like <gasps> completely, completely stressed. And um, so this is basically his story. This is what he said. Claire literally saved me loads of stress on my wedding day. The bow ties I ordered from another company never arrived. And six days before my wedding, I made contact with Claire. Two days later, and I had the bow ties in my hands. Yay! The bow ties looked even better than the images online and just completed my groomsman's attire perfectly. Clay was super friendly and efficient, which is a combination hard to beat. I would highly recommend Stitched as the look, quality and overall experience was amazing. So what was the lesson there? The lesson was be willing to answer that Sunday afternoon phone call. And you know what? Do it with a smile. It's like a hack. You know, when you're irritable and angry, just smile and you really can't sound irritable at all. It's just like, you know, that is my number one hack. <laughs> because if you can answer a call and be like, hey, how are you? Like, wow, great to hear from you. People are like, who is this person? This is amazing. And they immediately feel like they've got someone they can trust. And how many of you know that when you're dealing in the e-commerce space, that trust, especially with us suspicious South Africans, is vital. I mean, you're asking people to give you money for something that they can't touch or see, and they've got to trust that it's going to arrive. So trust is a big, big deal. All right, so that's my tip. Remember that. Just fake that smile, and, and it'll come through your voice. Okay, and the other thing, this is, I mean, when you're making handmade stuff, I mean, guys, like, it's always a labor of love. And... So there's a lot of work that I have to do to make sure that I'm organized so that I literally can turn on a tiki, as my mom says. I don't even know what a tiki is, but, you know, to get something done really, really quickly. You know, I have this um, cupboard, which I've turned into this magical Narnia desk thing. I don't have a photo, but it's amazing. You should pop in sometime, I'll show you. And uh, I've got all my bow ties, pre-cut, folded, everything. So they're there. They're ready to go. They're just ready and waiting. So stay organized. When you're I don't know how many makers we have in the room, maybe your clients. There are a lot of people in Cape Town who love making stuff, who want to sell it. So if you're going to be working with a client designing an online store for them, give them this tip. Say, hey, you know what? Stay as organized as you can because the quicker you can turn those products around, the faster they're going to arrive, the happier clients are going to be. I know we're all so impatient to receive our stuff. I mean, when we order from Take A Lot, we just drive there because we're around the corner because we don't want to wait for the courier. So be organized. And uh, if you have, um, you know, a warehouse, you're doing warehousing, drop shipping, that sort of thing, invest in that kind of software to make sure you've got your stock. Stay organized. It has literally saved my life many times and, and made me able to deliver amazing value. So this is actually a really cool story. Um, this picture is somewhere in this group of slides, but um, it was a Friday afternoon and I got this email. Hi, I am urgently looking for men's suspenders, 50 millimeters wide, question mark, question mark, question mark. I am from Pretoria, but currently in Cape Town, needed by today if possible. So I get this email thinking, oh, dude, it's Friday afternoon. Do I really want to respond to this? Like, I want to just be like, yay, it's Friday and switch off. But I was kind of curious. Why does this guy need it today? What are 50 millimeter wide suspenders? I had no idea what he was looking for. And this is my business. So thankfully, he gave his number. So I called him like, hey, Andre, just got your email. Tell me more. What is it you're looking for? Like. And it was the coolest story. This guy is actually this, like, I don't know, I call him a tactical shooter. I don't know, competitive shooter. Um, but actually,
actually there's this spot out there where these guys um, have guns and they have these targets and it's like in the, the video games and they have to like jump through obstacles and, and they've got like microseconds to shoot targets. It's so exciting. So, you know, this guy, um, says new, he is looking for a pair of custom made suspenders and he's been like all over Joburg, everywhere looking and nobody can help him. And I'm like, challenge accepted. So I said to him, right, where are you? Can you come? to our home where I run my studio, let's do this, let's make these suspenders for you. And so he rocks up, he's so excited, you know, I pull out the leather and the rivets and everything and I have no idea really what he's going to ask me to do. And um, I love challenges like that. So he rocks up, we design these amazing suspenders for him. I felt like I was building armor for a gladiator and <laughs> I actually call it, call the suspender set the gladiator. It was brilliant. I felt so cool like making this stuff. Because I'm super girly, I think you can tell. So when I get to do stuff like that, it's like, ah, you know. So um, he actually was um, going to be in a competition the next day. And he was so excited to have these suspenders because um, maybe Gideon can demonstrate. <laughs> but think about it. You've got a rig around your waist and it's like five to ten kgs. And uh, you're crouching down and you're jumping and you're crawling and your pants kind of keep slipping down. And time matters. You can't waste time pulling up your pants the whole time. So he's just so excited. And he came in second place, which was actually a huge deal because it was a national competition. Can you tell I love my clients? Like their stories are like my, my stories that make me so happy. Um, all right. So then huh, what happens when you get it wrong, guys? I'll get to quit questions after what happens when you fail really badly i've failed so many times okay it's scary now i had gone overseas and i got a, a call uh, an email from a client looking for an item and i said cool get in touch with me in three weeks time i'll be back i can help you out i got back from overseas and a member of my family actually my my brother's newborn had died and um it was incredibly tragic and and devastating and I wasn't actually in that moment, in that space, able to do my business. And I, it was horrible. I knew I was letting people down. I couldn't get to emails. So I kept having to email people and say, guys, I'm so sorry this has happened. And people were really understanding. But Ray, who'd contacted me like weeks before and was quite an urgent order, I kept forgetting about him. And eventually he messaged me. He's like, hey, like, are you still going to do this? And it was major, like, humble pie moment. I had to apologize. But I jumped right on it and I got that order out. And this is his review. He said, rain, snow, or World War III, you can rely on Claire to meet your request. What you want is what you get, top quality. Okay, this was a person I totally disappointed. I'd actually looked like I didn't care about him. But uh, we turned the situation around. So this is the thing. When you get stuff wrong, guys, be real, be honest, be human. Like my golden rule is the minute I get an email from someone, I say, hey, this is so amazing. I love your ideas. Wedding is going to be so cool. Friendliness is celebrating people. So when you're dealing with, you know, making a website for someone, you know, get excited about their business idea. That's the key to friendliness. And the other thing is when you're friendly, when you're human, it totally sets the tone for when you stuff up and you need to ask. I am so sorry. Can you give me some grace? People are way more willing to do that. Um, how much time do we have left, Kim? 15 minutes. We're still good. We're still good. Okay. Oh, the other thing. You know how like people can be really scary and nasty in an email and on social media? Like, it's really scary. So, you know, <laughs> I'm sure we've all had some pretty aggressive emails. Um, you know what I do? I phone people. Because guess what? They can't be that aggressive when they're talking to you on the phone. Maybe some can, but in my experience, most people kind of chicken out and they become more human with you. So the minute something goes wrong or, you know, phone that person, be honest, say, hey, I have stuffed up, but I'm going to be doing this to fix it. Is this okay with you? How can we work together? It kind of diffuses the tension. Um, so that's, that's my tip. Because people can get pretty angry in the in the wedding industry when you've gotten something wrong. All right. Um, I had this really cool 
review from a guy who, uh, full disclosure, he actually works for Gumtree. Um, so he's a little bit more jacked on what to expect on online shopping. And um, I'm just going to read you a quick portion of uh, his review. So two things made Claire stand out from the crowd. The prompt and professional way in which she handles all communications and the perceived quality, value and uniqueness of her products. Communication skills might seem like it's less important than providing a quality product, but especially in the world of online shopping, it shapes the perception you have of the business or person that you are dealing with long before you get hold of any of their products. Claire certainly takes a lot of care to ensure their customers are serviced by transparent, prompt and professional communication. So I would say a fast and friendly reply is the easiest win of your competition. Because I can promise you, people shop around. They have emailed other people. Be the first to reply. You will be ahead of the game. I have this golden rule. I never open an email or a WhatsApp message unless I'm able to reply straight away. And the other golden rule is that I just reply straight away. I have my phone on data all the time. It's always with me. I'm always accessible. And I take 10 seconds to reply. Literally, I just take 10 seconds. I don't overthink my replies. And the beauty of that is that people feel... <laughs> See, getting a call from a client. There you go, you got to answer that. So the beauty of that is that people feel really appreciated and respected and you immediately gain trust. Okay, how many of you live in fear of the bad review on social media? Anyone here has Facebook? Got you in terror, yes. Okay, my best friend in all the world, okay, she's this phenomenal designer, internationally known. She got a one-star review on Etsy. That is like every designer's worst nightmare. And the client happened to be one of those clients that did not read the policies, did not order the right size, did everything wrong, and then came back at Anna like it was her fault, like a ton of bricks. So Anna taught me something amazing, is that when you get those really snotty bad reviews, you've kind of already lost that person. Like their goal now is just to spew their hatred all over your business. You're not gonna win them back. But like in high school, when things go down, there's never only just the two of you in the room. There's always a crowd, people watching and wanting to see who's gonna get mud on their face, who's gonna get punched. So remember, you're not talking to the person who's trying to fight with you. You're talking to the audience who's watching. So when you respond to those bad reviews, it's a learning opportunity for your audience. You can basically use it as an opportunity to very politely, politely, okay, say what went wrong, why it went wrong. Use it as an opportunity to, to explain your policies. Well, we have a time frame. We need these requirements and, and apologize for going wrong, but use it as an opportunity to educate your future customers because they're going to read that and be like, ah, okay, this is what happened. So that, that was my golden tip. And I am now at the end of my presentation. So who's ready to get a bow tie? Okay, you over there with the red jersey. Okay. Um... Lady over there with the red jersey. Oh, good. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, something that I find interesting is you have uh, quite a, a defined product range. Yes. And to bring you up to be able to do the communication decently, and then also once or twice to go the extra custom mile that could raise as well. How did you decide what your limits are going to be in terms of I'm going to do this, but I'm not also going to do that? They could easily ask me to do this and this and this, but I'm not going to do that. But if you, how do you that range? It's a difficult one. Um, I basically, the existing range I have helps me to stay organized. And when it comes to um, people asking things, I often do get a lot of custom orders. But what it comes down to for me is time management. So I try to stay as organized as possible, keep my workflow as streamlined as possible. That and then enables me to go the extra mile and do the strange, unusual orders. Does that answer your question? Yes, okay. And the nice thing is I really did a lot of research through the last six years over the wedding trends. And with guys, thankfully, there's a lot of basics that you can stick with that, um, that kind of control the product range. Otherwise, I could have thousands of items on my shop. Yes. Okay. All right.
You gotta jump up. You gotta jump up. Um, All right. There we go. So, yes. Uh, yeah, I actually mentioned you have like a specific product range. How did you get started in this whole industry? Like, how did you get the courage to start your own business and just like and start your business? It was an accident. <laughs> Complete and total accident. I studied marketing and I dreamt of being this like brand manager for Coca Cola something like that and I got into the industry and I absolutely hated it sorry marketing people I hated it and on the side I was making these accessories for brides and then my dad said hey you hate what you're doing stop I'm gonna fund you and uh, I'll take care of you so it was literally just by accident I had someone contact me and say can you make this for me and I was like sure let me try it and that basically birthed the business. So sometimes the best ideas and opportunities come by accident. All right, is that good? Okay, you look you look really keen. Okay, come on, come on. There we go. Okay, this is a really hard job for you to have right now. Oh, you're gonna get to <laughs> So how do I stay human? Yes. Yes, right. I don't actually know, but what I'm trying to do is that I take every Sunday and that is my complete day off. Um, I do things that energize me. I've heard that a uh, Sunday well spent brings a week of content. Um, and I sometimes work from eight until 10 at night. Full disclosure, we don't have kids. We have a, a fair child, um, but I try to stay organized. I, I can't stress that enough. Keep your workspace clean um, so that you can really move fast. I find being organized creates time for you. And um, I think it's a lot of just flying by the seat of my pants. Like I just, I live each day for each day. Like I don't stress too much about what's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. This, this is good. Yeah, and then from now on, I think you're going to choose. Is your answer. Okay, okay. Um, so as a fellow, so the entrepreneur, um, I my struggle is to like I am really emotionally tired, like yeah. with responding to clients and like yeah. you seem like you just always say yes. Yes. So like I'm wants to make sure I can do like do I have to say yes? So yeah. like how do you kind of like differentiate between like I can't say yes to this client and like, you know, I'm gonna say yes even though like I'm dead right now. Right, exactly. that's such a good question. So be comfortable saying no. Sometimes you do have to say no. And I put in a boundary in place where I basically have, if it's a rush order, if it's an overnight thing, I charge people for that. Because, you know, their crisis is not my fault or my problem. So they're gonna need to pay a special fee for that. And sometimes I do just have to say no to people. I say, look, I'm so sorry, we are fully booked right now. Um, we do have this stock, which is ready to ship. Um, but don't be afraid to say no. Like it took me a really long time to learn that. I really did. You can ask my husband. Um, I actually, I learned that by breaking. Um, you eventually reach a point where you, you realize this is where my boundary is. Because if you're extending yourself so much, you're not able to share, like take care of your current customers. And I, I learned that and I was like, you know what? I have to say no to this person or I'm disrespecting my current customers if that helps you. It's a journey, it really is, but you got You have to know it. Okay, now I need to pick someone. How many bow ties have we got left? Uh, two more. Two more bow ties. Okay. All right. Someone stand up. Someone stand up. You. Okay. Lady over there with the black. <laughs> okay. So I actually run like a dream development spot. Wow. Like, how is that? Is it verified? And we do all the planning online. Yeah. Um. 
All right, so there's an amazing woman called Brene Brown. Brene Brown. She talks a lot on shame and, yeah. you know, all that stuff. I really recommend that you listen to some of her talks on uh, YouTube and some of her books. Um, the thing is, like, if you're going to carry another person's irritation and anger, it's like, it's going to, it really is going to drain you. And I learned um, from an incredible teacher that it's like people, when they're trying to give you drama, they're like, they're trying to give you a gift. They're holding out this parcel to you to take. It's your choice to take that and unwrap it or not. And that's something that's helped me amazingly. Like, I just know, you know, I can make a mistake. I'm human and uh, I don't have to take on their drama. So I'd love to chat with you afterwards. I've got some, some wedding stories I can share with you. I'd love to encourage you. Okay, is there one more? N jump up, you gotta jump up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, <laughs> go for it. You talked about a, a bad response. Yes. Um, in, in your process, do you, do you have a point that you, that you know this person is not going to be winnable over? Or, or do you, what I'm actually asking is, is would, you, would you cut, cut off your limb to help them to, to rectify it? Or is it rather a, a, a issue of... Um, like I said, education for the rest, but where's that point that you think, okay, this person is not helpable? Uh, for okay, so I find, you know, when I'm responsible, there's so much room for redeeming the situation. Um, we can only do what we can, but I feel like there's a bit more, more room when, when you're at fault, because you can say, look, I stuffed up here, but this is how I'm going to resolve the situation. How they react to that is completely in their own court. Um, you, we unfortunately can't control people's reactions to us. So when you have someone that is like belligerently angry with you and aggressive, you really can't do much with that person. That's kind of when you know, okay, look, I have to let this person go because they've actually got other issues. Um, but one of the things that I know when it comes to you know, worrying about bad reviews when you, you've made a mistake or something, well, you just feel, sometimes you just have a feeling that a client isn't happy with you. Make that phone call, like take it offline as quickly as possible, that's the golden rule. So if they have left a message on social media, respond and say, hey, we'd love to talk to you in person about what happened. Um, we really feel like we can, we can do something here to turn this around for you, so be positive. Um, and if they just keep bringing you down, just at some point you have to let it go. Because again, it's like you only have so much to give and so much you can do. Um, so that's, that's it. Okay, do we have time for more questions? I think we've run out of uh, bow ties. Uh, Is that it? Okay, I will, I will be here still. Um, come and find me. I'd love to talk to you and uh, answer your questions. All right, thank you so much, everyone. This has been so much time. Thank you. I have made the most amazing setup for dogs where I actually did this gorgeous leash and collar and custom harness. So, awesome. any dog lovers out there, definitely bow ties. I can do it. Um, oh, there are my details, guys. You'll see my cell phone number, my email address, and website. Feel free to get in touch. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.